What is up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Had to get a few things set up real quick. But... We've got Grievous and Pieces on the table. So we're going to get to painting this guy. First things first, what I've done um, is I have a seam right along his cloak here. And so to help clean that up a little bit, I take a little bit of matte varnish and brush it into the seam. It helps hide that seam just a little bit. as it dries. So we'll let that dry a little bit more before we get too much work done on that. It goes all the way around and all underneath, so we'll get started there. So before I talk too much more, I need to get a drink and then we'll get started. Sorry about that, I am back. All right, on to my wet palette. Let's get it. Take a look here. What do we got? So, and from when I was painting my droids, I have a gray metallic blend right here that um, I think is gonna work, for, work well for Grievous. And then, um, what I'm going to use for his main skin is an army painter, brain matter, let's see if I can get it in focus here, for some reason it doesn't want to, anyways, if you can read that, it says brain matter beige, I think that's going to be a good color for him, once we give it a nice sepia wash, so, let me get my computer set back here. So it's out of the way. I've already pre-made his base because I made it while I was um, working with the droids the other day. So that's ready to go. Get my fan turned so it's cooling me off a little bit. It's warm in my paint studio. Okay, let's get this brain matter, matter base shaken up and ready to go. If you're in here hanging out with me, let me know. Drop me a message in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. But we're going to start on his face. So um, I've got a reference photo pointed up there. I'm just having a look in it. I don't think his head is so small. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it to where you can see it very well while I'm painting it. All I've done is I've taken, I've hot glued it on a stick, and then I've primed it with a gray primer. Nothing fancy. I got some matte varnish in the place. I don't want it on that cloak, so I'll take care of that. I know on camera that brain matter beige looks like white, but I promise it's not. It is very much a beige color. I need to clean up my paint desk one day soon. Time for some zen painting. <laughs> it will, um... It's whatever, wait, oh. what the heck? Sorry about that. Not sure what happened. Somehow I think I lost the stream for a second. 
So. Anyways, as I was saying, it's whatever um, Pretzel Rocks ends up playing. It's on their adventure stream or whatever. I don't know, Epic. Something like that. Alright. So. Got a nice thin brain matter beige color here. And we're just putting that on everywhere. We're going to do a couple thin coats. The area that we can't hit because of the hot glue is going to be just fine because that's going to be glued onto his neck. So. Try to get as much out of the eyes as possible. Right, we will let that dry real quick. We'll go into some of this micro. I didn't get my brush cleaned up. But that little bit of brain matter beige isn't going to matter a whole lot. We're going to get down some fresh Necromancer cloak paint here. And we're going to start working on some of, or on his cloak a little bit. Get it thinned out. two different pieces while they dry back and forth. So now I don't want to touch that yet. The the matte varnish isn't quite dry. I looked dry from over here till I picked it up. Give that a few more minutes. So here's how I've got my grievous set up with the the gun and two sabers. It took some finagling, so what we can do while we're waiting is we can get these sabers painted white. I always paint the saber blades white or whatever white like color I'm using because it's going to help give a very bright color underneath once we're ready to put that color on there. And we'll go with one blue and one green. We'll see about doing some light OSL work here, possibly. And. I'm just taking a look at what do we got here. So first things first is we'll go into that color I was talking about at the beginning of the stream, which is going to be just a little bit of metallic with some Necromancer cloak in there. And that's going to give a somewhat metal look to Grievous, but not too bad, not too strong. I think that's the word I was looking for. And we'll start covering all of the areas that are that way. So like the foot, the feet, and these little back springs. Right, let me paint on stream here. I'm really bad about that. Get a little bit on to some areas that are going to have white on it. That's okay. We can fix it. Do some lighting adjustments here. So like I said, it's mostly a necromancer cloak with just a little bit of gunmetal mixed in. Just to give it a little bit of sparkle. Nothing too fancy. Like when I say just a little bit, it's probably like five parts necromancer to one part gunmetal, if that, maybe six to one. And 
what you hear rattling as I turn it is this container that I'm using to hold him on has rocks in it. Some of my basing rocks. It just gives it a little bit of heft. Helps, helps me with my shakiness. Hit my head on the lamp. So, I tend to shake a lot when I paint. As I imagine many of you do. So I had to find little tips and tricks to help me overcome that. A little bit of weight in the handle helps me do that. The other thing that I help is I keep my forearms propped on my desk, and that helps manage that shake as well. Which is part of the reason you'll see me commonly creep up towards the top of my screen while I'm painting is because I'm slowly inching my arms forward to try to get them propped on the desk better. So part of this painting puts me in a position that I'm not used to working up, but we'll make it work. So how are things going in your life today? If you're in here watching, let me know. The nice thing about Grievous is he's not too many colors, so we'll get to focus on really building up some of these other colors and really bringing out some highlights and things rather than having to spend a lot of time with a large color palette where you can completely just botch everything like I do and um, overshoot. Let's try that again. Remember thin coats, but working with the black it covers pretty well. Make sure you get up in between his little chest plates, or not chest plates, shin plates. It's an easy thing to forget to do. And he's mostly black on the back side. And if you're doing the cloak like I am, it's not going to be hugely important because you won't see it. Still want it to be somewhat accurate. If you're going for movie accurate. If you're not, you paint your grievous however you would like. More power to you. Just working on putting the gray down, giving that white over on the head a good chance to dry. Now you could have not assembled him first and it would make it a little bit easier to get to some of these areas. Um, but I really needed to get an idea of how I was going to put them together. So I had to assemble them all the way in. With his ball joints, it's not like you can snap fit him like the um, the old Star Wars Legion models. So he got put together completely.
You could prime him black. Um, it's going to make painting some of those cream areas a little bit harder. But if you prime him black, um, you won't have to worry about missing any areas as much as if somebody painted him gray or, or white. And to be fair, to be honest, I don't think he would look terrible primed black. A lot of times people don't prime black because you get a little bit duller colors. Um, but I don't think it would be a big deal on Grievous. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll answer what I can. I enjoy interacting with my audience. Or you can sit quietly and watch the stream. Whatever works for you. Send us the way of Jacket Brush. Um, right now I'm using some cheap Princeton brushes, but I have a whole bunch of Army Painter brushes on the way. So I have a Winsor & Newton that, to be honest, I'm just too afraid of messing up to use because I'm not very nice to my brushes. Um, these are, I think this brush was a couple bucks at uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever. Whatever your local craft store is. Um, I also have a set of 100, or not 100, 50 size 1 brushes that I use. Um, got them off Amazon for like 16 bucks, and they work pretty well. I just tried them out for the first time. So if you're looking for budget brushes, it's literally called One Happy Choice brand, size 1. There's 20 bucks or 16 or 16 to 20 bucks for a 50 pack. And you know what? When they get gunked up and I don't want them anymore, I throw them away. Because they were 16 bucks for 50 of them. So I don't feel bad. Whereas my Windsor and Newtons, I wear them out quick. I've used Army Painter brushes in the past and I do like them. I just don't have a store local that sells them to me. Or, no, it's not just me they don't sell them to. I don't have a store local that carries Army Painter products. So it makes it a little tough for me to get a hold of them. Why aren't you using 3D printer handle? Because. Uh, I had them all um, used for the droids, and I had hot glued him to one already when I hot glued the droids on. And a lot of times when I'm working with a miniature that I plan on taking to like a extra higher, like a higher level of detail, I want a little bit heavier handle, and this one has rocks in the bottom of it to make it a little heavier. As I mentioned in earlier in the video, it helps with my shakes. So 
So we're just being pretty sloppy with this base coat, trying to avoid the white areas as much as possible, or what's going to be quote unquote white, you know, the brain matter beige. It's actually a beige color. Um, because it's a little harder to cover this with, or white with this. But if you get a little bit on the areas, it's not a problem because we're going to have to put a couple coats on those plates anyways. Um, I don't know if they'll be releasing a handle. I did suggest it to them. I don't think they have a hobby holder right now. Earth. Thanks for sharing. Or thanks for the compliments. No. If you guys feel like sharing, feel free to share this around. Get some people peeps in the stream. Alright. We're going to wash our brush real quick. We're going to set old Grievous off to the side. Make sure I get all my black out of there. I have been trying to paint and frame. Every once in a while I move out. When I look up to the camera. Or when I look up to the monitor to see the chat. That is when I tend to drift out of frame. Alright, second coat of Brain Matter Beige on this face. that guy dry. Sorry, Mike, I missed your question. Um, I use tap water. Nothing fancy. I got a small bubble in my matte medium or matte varnish that I'm using to seal this gap. So we'll solve that real quick. I feel like I'm on trial here, Dan. Alright, we're gonna give a second coat here to the lightsabers. And this white equivalent that we're using tonight is Brain Matter Beige. Tuesday or Monday? Probably Gen Con recovery. Alright. Get some white applied on here. Again, work with thin coats of your white. It's going to take multiple. Just plan on that ahead of time. You won't be disappointed when you have to do multiple coats of white. Alright, 
The white on the saber blades is to give the um, saber colors when I apply them a little bit brighter of a base. So it's going to help them be a brighter blue and a brighter green. Because if you apply color over black, it tends to dull it just a little bit. comes in here, he misses the parts where I explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, and then asks me the same questions again. <laughs> I hope you know I'm joking. But yeah, I did answer that earlier. No, it's just the Brain Matter, matter Beige paint. My white equivalent that I'm using tonight. Skeleton bone is going to be a little too dark on these guys. And so I probably end up swapping this out for my stormtroopers as well. That way I don't have to custom mix my color anymore. I kind of forgot I had this color in my drawer as I throw General Grievous at my arm. Just painting white on there. Trying to be more in stream, but I promise if I miss getting something in stream, I'm probably going to paint that part again, or in focus, or frame, or whatever it's called. I'll probably end up painting that part again anyways, so. Um, we are only painting one Grievous tonight. I do have a couple more to paint. One for another one for me, um, and one for a customer. My son's getting into Legion, and so he wants a couple of the, his characters for his own. So when he was with me at Gen Con, we bought some, and I told him he could use the clones out of the two sets. So I get the droids out of the two sets. Officially, the clones are mine, but they're going to be his army to use. Before I go any further on that, I want to apply another coat to the face, just because I want to be able to start working on that face soon. I will be making a whole droid army, so I collect all the things Star Wars Legion. Um, if you haven't seen my droids, I did an assembly guide on them the other day on how I put them together, spent a couple hours on stream assembling two squads of them, and then um, painted them up on stream. Or I didn't paint them up on stream, painted them up off stream, and posted videos of them, but here's essentially what they turned out looking like. If I can get them in focus. So, there are Geonosis colors. They look much more brown on camera than they do in real life. I'm not sure what that's about, so. I know that's what people say a lot of times, but it's true in this case, at least in my eyes. Alright. Just 
just take your time when you're painting this white on. Again, thin coats. Thin coats of white. Oh, I meant to paint his gun gray. I forgot. We'll have to go back and fix that. stream. Sorry, I was really trying to get a brace real quick for a minute for this part. Yep, the whole inside of his arm is black. I didn't realize that. So I'll just reach in, rinse my brush out, make sure I get all that paint out before it gets up in the ferrule. Not that it matters, this brush is worn, worn out anyways. But it's good practice for your expensive brushes once you get to that. This is just an old worn out size zero that I'm using for base coating. Seven viewers in here. I think that's an all-time high for me. At one time. Feel free to drop a message in the chat. I don't mind talking with y'all. Just to update where we're where we're at and what we're doing, we're applying Army Painter Brain Matter Beige to all of the white slash tan areas of old Mr. Asthma here. best way to clean your brushes um, is going to be with a brush soap. So whatever your preferred brush soap is, I have a couple different pucks that I have. This one's going to be hard to read because it's been painted over, but the Master's Brush Cleaner. Um, the one I tend to use more frequently is Gentastic's Drunken Brush Goop. Um, you can find this online. Just look up Gentastic's Drunken Brush Goop from slowfusegaming.com. Um, I don't know why I use it more. It works great, but they both work great. You can find the Masters at any of your local hobby stores. Um, craft stores, I should say. So, Michael's Hobby Lobby. Um, Gentastic stuff is a special order off the internet. do is you take whatever your brush soap is. This one's a little dried out on the top, so I gotta get it wet again. Take some water. I'm not pushing too hard in there. And it should lather up like that. Yeah, there's a lot of detail in the arms. So I've got this up to a nice lather, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some of that lathered soap on my brush here with a little bit of water and just in the palm of my hand. I'm not going to be able to resuscitate this brush. It's long dead. Um, there's paint in the ferrule. It's not holding together anymore. Um, and you're going to clean it until you no longer see color coming out. And then rinse it off with water. and. Like I said, this brush is not salvageable. It's just a base coat brush. Um, but that's how you would clean it. 
And then if you want to distort for a while, you could put a little bit of the soap in there, shape it back to the point that you want. And then um, uh, it helps condition the brush as well. All right, while we're waiting here, this face is dry, so we'll take one more coat. We've still got some gray poking through in a few areas. I think one more coat will do it. It's going to take a couple of coats to to cover this. That's going to be the longest part is getting this white base coat down. So I've got my base coat brushes and I have detail brushes. My base coat brushes tend to be a little more worn out. They're just for not being super careful. I push the brush in weird ways and I don't care if they get messed up really. Then my detail brushes are what I come back later and ended up doing the real work with. There's no difference between the two. My detail brushes are just newer versions of my They're just new brushes, is what I was trying to say. My brain stopped for a second. Not sure what happened there. to um, and then wash it with this set like a soft tone in order to um, make it a little bit brown we're gonna wash this with a soft tone as well and it'll make it even more of that iconic grievous color so what we'll probably end up doing is once we get to the wash step we'll apply the wash on some of these large plates and then wipe it off so it just colors it. Um, because we don't want it to pool on the large plates. If you want to know how thin I'm working with here, it's still somewhat transparent when I paint it on my fingernail, but it's almost acts like water on there. So like, and it wipes right off. But so everyone says, you know, thin your paints to the consistency of milk. It's that's a general good general guideline. But then my question became, what kind of milk? Because <laughs> 2% milk is very different than whole milk. So, I'm also a smart ass, like that. So the best way I've found to make sure that it's not too thick is to just paint it on the, your thumbnail. If it looks splotchy on there, it's gonna look splotchy in your miniature. If you're not getting any coverage on your thumbnail, you're not going to get any coverage on your miniature. And the cool thing is, when you're done, you have a nice, unique manicure. We're 
we're not going to put as much detail work onto this back because you will never see it on this miniature with the way the cape's going to be on them. But we at least want the colors in there. I'm really big on don't spend your time on parts that aren't going to be seen. Or don't waste your time. Get them the color they need to be and leave them that way. If I were doing a show quality piece, then yeah, I would. The whole miniature would get the same treatment. But I'm not. I'm doing pieces that you'd be teaching you how to do pieces that you'd be happy to put on the table and say, hey, I painted that. For my reference photo, I'm using a photo that I found online from one of the high-end toy kits, you know, the collector's toy kits like Hot Toys or something like that. I don't know which brand it was, but they tend to be pretty movie accurate. Alright, we're going to let that dry. Check on our matte varnish over here. It still has a small bubble in it. We can get it out though. The seam on this cloak was something terrible, and I tried my best to try to get it all sealed up, so it takes a little work. I may have to break down and put a little green stuff in there if I can't get it. Um, we will see. Grab my wrong brush. Don't worry about if you make mistakes. It's easier to cover the white with black than it is the opposite. start over and start giving everything a second coat. Second coat of white. Well, brain matter beige. All around. And it will probably have to get one more coat after this yet. Just because white colors are notoriously bad for coverage. Which is why I hate painting stormtroopers, slash clones, slash any all white units. And typically I'll do those with my airbrush, makes light work of them.
Sorry about bumping the camera there. Let me get that fixed. I'm not sure how I managed to pull that off. that up with a fine brush. that up and try to touch up little black marks all over the way. So I'm probably going to toss a poll up if I can figure out how. Apparently you can't do polls on Facebook pages. You can do them like in a group or something. But I need to figure out, offer a few options for what nights would be best for people that want to watch the stream regularly. I need to get this thing nailed down to a regular night rather than just kind of when I feel like it. I know Tuesdays have been my regular thing and that's what I'm leaning towards. being my regular go-to night, but I'm not sure if that's going to work for everyone. Nope. I don't want circus music. Well, maybe. Let's see. Nope, we'll skip that. So if you have an idea what night you think would be best, feel free to post it in the comments. What night works best for you as a viewer? If you had to pick one night that you would for sure get a stream from me, what night would you want that to be? Wednesdays are out, so I will throw that out there to begin with. Um, Wednesdays are my RPG nights. that are over here drying. That varnish is still drying on this guy. And we are looking very good here. So I'm just getting a look at what we're going to do. I need to pull up a, a video uh, or a picture of his bust. 
Mond Mondays are fine for you, John. Your only day is Saturday, so all of my streams you have to watch later. You're here with me now, though, Mike. Hold up. So, inside the eye. I think I have a nice deep red that will work for that. And it's going to be Army Painter Vampire Red. Let me get some uh, a ball bearing in here because I've not used this. a little bit of the, the medium. <laughs> they told you to stay home. <laughs> well, there you go. So, shaking the tar out of this. That's the one thing about Army Painter paints that you have to keep in mind if you're going to use them, is you got to shake the tar out of them when you first open them. Shake them a lot. A couple minutes. I know it's boring to watch me shake paint. Sorry. Alright. So for this, I'm going to need a pretty fine tip brush to get into where I need to. So I'm going to take a fine tip one. Thin down that red paint real good. And then get inside his eye sockets. And if we go over a little bit, that's fine. We can cover it with some of the white later. No, it looks like a lot right now. I don't think I'll get that in focus. It's pretty small. You drop two of them in there. I just do the one. All right. The other thing we're going to do is these little streaks on his head. Take some thin down necromancer cloak. For his mouthpiece, we're going to take some pure gunmetal. And hit these little lines on his mouth. I know it's real hard to see what I'm doing, that's why I'm trying to localize more so. Just need to get some fresh stuff. This one's pretty wore, paint's pretty wore out and thin. Yeah, I need 
get some fresh paint. I'm trying to milk that bottle of gunmetal for all it's worth. For his little respirator marks or whatever they are. Voice box cover. Asthma nebulizer. Sure, what they are. All right, we'll set that aside and let it dry a little bit. After I, there's a spot that the brain matter beige didn't quite cover as well on this piece that I wanted. Set him aside for a minute, check again on how this is drying over here. I think we've dried up. Alright, so we're going to go into our pure necromancer cloak for this part and cover this whole thing. Minus the very inner neck piece, that's going to be brain matter beige. So, thin paint. What the necromancer cloak is going to allow us to do is come back and wash it later, and we'll get a black when we wash it. Again, I cheat and use washes when I paint, so. and stuff that's intended to be handled and touched and played with. You should do it too if you would like. Don't feel bad. Or if you want, you can spend hours building up individual highlights too, that's fine. I've done it. probably do some pretty some selective washing with this certain parts of him and we're gonna have to be careful putting on the black wash onto the metallic parts of him also when we get to that step I don't actually like the quilted underside on this, but it's pretty detailed and it lets us do some cool work with it. You could pick out as much detail under there as you want, or as little. We'll pick out a few. We're not going to do every single little quilt, because not all of it would be highlighted, but even naturally. But we'll pick some out. So. You get that black all the way up to the edge of the quilt. I'm probably out of frame. That's a special superpower I have is painting out of frame. fast. And we'll go back and look at our grievous body and see if there's any areas that need more of this brain matter on there. Anything that's maybe not as covered as well as we would like. Like this kneecap. 
this hand for sure. This other hand. Now this whole arm probably could use a second another coat. <laughs> Somehow I missed completely painting under that pauldron altogether. Drop my brush on the ground. One of them. Anyways. Like I said, areas that are going to be covered by the cloak, I'm not focusing as much on. Just want to make sure the colors are there so if you catch a glimpse of it, it doesn't look unpainted. guys are enjoying watching me paint as much as I'm enjoying painting this guy right now. Necromancer cloak and metallic mix that I had mentioned earlier in the stream. It's gun, a little bit of gunmetal in some necromancer cloak, and we'll get the gun with it real quick. side of this arm with it, so. On the reference photo I'm looking at, it is black on the inside of the arm. So make sure we get that. Almost went into the wrong color paint there. We'll use this for some one of the saber hilts also. And then we'll come back and touch it up with some silver gunmetal or whatever. And we'll do both of them that way and then touch up the areas that aren't supposed to be black with another color. of his cloak is going to be the same vampire red as I paint out a stream again. And if you mess over onto the black, that is okay. It's going to be easy to touch up the areas with the black. I just like to give myself an outline, so I'm not even trying to be super neat and not get it on there. Touch-ups will come later. 
and when you use the wash method, you'd be amazed at how many mistakes a wash will help cover up. So this will take a couple coats of red, just because red's another notoriously bad color for coverage. sure why the armies I like have to be the most difficult colors to paint. You know, Imperials, Blacks, Whites, and Reds, Reds on the Royal Guards, Droids, Whites, Tans, and Reds and Blacks. <laughs> Alright, so here's how we're looking here on the cloak. Let that dry for a minute, and we'll come back and check on our face over here, see how things are going. We are mostly dry there. So, we need a good eye color for him. And he's got almost like an ochre color eye. So... So we go for a sulfide ochre so we can... Um, highlight up. I already have some on my palette, as I realize that after I shake it up a whole bunch. That's a nice. This is nice. The nice thing about a wet palette is that a little bit of water brings this paint right back to life. So if you don't use a wet palette, I would highly recommend getting one. probably not going to be able to see this very well on stream because it's such a small detail that I'm working on here. just noticed that I forgot is he has little pieces that run off to the side of his mouth that are metallic here there we go and then into our brain matter beige again to touch up a spot Brain Matter Beige again with my fine tip brush. And I'm going to touch up around those 
streaks I put on his face. I wish there was a better way for me to show you what I'm doing here. I just, it's tough with everything set up for catching the whole miniature. Getting the whole head on there is hard. But if you actually try really hard, he does actually have the tr little triangle shapes at the top. And you can get them in there if you're careful. If you work with a little bit thicker paint, you can run your brush sideways and it won't get in the little cracks. Not straight, but not straight this, the thickness of out of the bottle, but a little bit thicker than you would if you're base coating. So, all right, let's go back into the sulfide ochre again and do another coat on the eyes. Just to make sure they're really yellow. Did my sound level drop? Or just the music? I'm reading my mic level as being okay. The music's a little quieter, it's a quieter song. Is that better? If you can hear me in the chat, let me know. I got just a little bit of red somewhere I don't want it. So, or not red, some yellow. So we'll go touch it up real quick. Let that dry and then we'll fix it again. Here's where we're at so far, if I can get it in focus. So one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thin out some of this Necromancer cloak and put some dirty streaks on his face. Just checking if y'all mic check, mic check. All right, let's go back into our sulfide ochre again. We're still waiting on the red over there to dry, and we're gonna fix that eye. Last but not least, we're going to go get his little iris on there. I 
a shot with it, so get the area wet. I'll clean it up a little bit. It's okay. We can fix it. Oops. Alright. As I go way over, so we'll touch that area up with a little bit of white once it dries. Try and get into focus here. Alright. Let's go ahead and get our saber blades the color we want them to be. So the color I'm going to use for one saber blade is Void Shield Blue. I already have a little bit on my palette. And then for our other saber, we're going to use Jungle Green. Good to hear, John. Thanks, sir, for letting me know. I mean, not good to hear that it was on your end, but I'm glad it's nothing on my end. Jungle Green. Back to our Brain Matter Beige for a minute. Touch up a couple areas on the chest. spending too much time focusing on the areas that will be covered by the cloak. I think I've mentioned that a couple times, but just want to make sure that's clear. Still waiting on the, the coat to dry, or the cloak to dry. We're going to go back and touch up some of our areas where we got white on places we didn't want, so we'll grab that fine tip brush we've been working with. That'll let us really do some line work along the edges of things. We got a little bit of white that we didn't need. These little ball joints on his legs, on the outside of the knee, 
are black in the reference photo that I have. So we'll look at those. The other side is a little bit tougher. It's covered by a saber, so we'll do the best we can. The inside of the knees. Just looking for spots where we missed or overshot. Like I said, white's easier to cover with black than vice versa, so. Take your time doing this part. You can put in as much effort or as little effort as you want into this part, so that is up to you. You want to try to let the black wash cover up as much as you can? Feel free. Just taking another look. Alright. Brain matter beige. There's a couple spots that I neglected. Like the top of this hand here. Fixing some touch up. And on the bottom of these fingers here, and the whole hand in general.
Just trying to make sure that we're all good before we put that cape on, because there's not a whole lot of going back once we put that on later. so far. I had it in focus for a minute. Maybe I need to switch hands because it, I think it likes focusing on my ring. I'm not sure. Let's try something else. It washes out the color with the white background. For a second. That's about as good as we're gonna get focus wise. Alright, so one thing I do wanna do is a gun, his gun just feels a little plain to me, you know? I think I'm gonna put some silver gunmetal on it. I don't know if this is canon or not, but we're gonna make the end of it gunmetal. I'm taking some pure gun metal I didn't thin down and kind of doing a dry brush effect on it. And once we wash it up, it'll look good, I promise. It just felt plain. So, the other thing we're going to do is his chest kind of glows a little bit green. In the pictures I've seen and the references, well, two things. From what I can see, his little neck piece under here is actually red. So, or part of it's red. So we're going to paint under his neck red. And then into his chest, we're going to put his green skin the color I want. Now, we're going to go with angel green to start, and we'll lighten up to green skin, or lighten up to Mixing in a little bit of jungle green. I have to set my colors that I use to the side so that when I write up my guide on the description, I don't forget. So what I do is I'll write a color down, then I put it back in my paint um, holder. So for the most part, there's a couple areas we're going to focus on with this green. Inside each side of the rib cage, and in the middle of the chest. So we'll let that dry for a minute, and while we're waiting. We're gonna get a little bit more brain matter beige. And we gotta fix that eye socket that I overshot just a little bit. Not much. Thin it down just a touch. And bring that eye socket back to white. The 
last thing we're going to do, if we can, is we're going to put our little eye highlights in. So just a little teeny teeny dot. that I use for this. I don't know why I'm using that one. Somewhere. It has a much finer point on it. touch up on the eye socket. Let's see if I can get this in focus. There's where we're at on the face. All right, second coats on our sabers. sabers now. So, step one, a little bit of gunmetal. Get our hilts. We're going to do one as gunmetal. Again, I don't know how canon this game is that I'm going for here on the sabers, but... One's going to be gunmetal around the top, and the other's going to be a copper color around the top. If it's not canon, oh well. I know there's a story about where his sagers came from and all that good stuff. be mostly canon here. So we've got a weapon bronze that I'm going to use. I don't tend to use this color very often, but I think it'll be good for that. Should have waited for the blue to dry a little bit more, but that's okay. just because make it look different. dry a little bit more. Our red is mostly dry, so we'll go into that. Second coat on the red. Not 
not being super neat about doing our red here because it's easier to touch up easy to touch up the black with it later. As I shake like a leaf for a second there. That may take one more light coat afterwards. One thing I'm going to do while I'm working on it is we're going to get this brain matter beige neck collar painted in. So just for chatting purposes, I've started listening to the Thrawn series on audiobook during my commutes to work, and it's really good. I'm about nine chapters into the first book. I've thoroughly been enjoying it. Have any of y'all any of y'all listened to any Star Wars audiobooks? If you're a Star Wars fan, or read any of the books. Saber to finish drying a little bit. The green's a little blobby. And I accidentally marked up the bottom of the saber, so we'll fix that. to go to sleep. Guess that can wait. <laughs> so the Benjamin, which Benjamin are you? Sarath, I am loving it so far. And I wasn't a huge Thrawn fan, but a lot of it's because I didn't know the backstory necessarily. Like, I've always been a Star Wars fan, but I've never been a big reader. And, yeah. Cool. I'm more of an Imperial fan, but I did like the Rogue Squadron stuff from a long time ago. But now they're not canon anymore, and that bumps me out. Good 
Good to hear, Benjamin. Me too. Me too. Happy at my paint table. Happy with the work that's been going on so far. Or that's been produced so far. Can't complain. We're going to let him dry for a second, and then we'll get to um, washing the body. We still have to do a little bit of work on the face and... Or a little bit of work on the um, cloak before it's ready for a wash, but we can get the rest of it ready to go. So while we're doing that and while we're chatting about our books, I'm going to clean my paint wells out a little bit. Just use my fingernail to scrape out some of the old dried on wash in there. had the old Thrawn series, you know, back from before Disney got their hands on canon. And, um, they were good. I read those. Um, growing up. I haven't seen Rebels Thrawn yet, um, but I've heard he was not the best. Um, I was waiting to watch Rebels until my son was old enough to appreciate it, and he's just now getting there. So what I've got is some dark dark tone, and we're going to start getting the wash applied to all of his metal. Take your time doing this. Try not to get it onto the white areas. And as I do it, I notice an area in his... behind that I got some white over that I didn't want there. So we'll let that dry for a minute and come back and wash that spot in a second. Make sure you push that black wash all the way right up against the white areas because it's going to help cover up some of those white imperfections that you may have left behind on accident, like I do. Again, I will shamelessly use my wash for what it's designed for, adding shadows, highlights, and cover-up. Mostly because I'm not pulling the wash over the entire body. Thanks. I posted them a few days ago when I was building my droid army when I did that stream, and then I saw today that somebody took a very similar pose. But, I mean, I guess there's only so many poses that you can do. But I thought I would be unique with the two sabers and a gun. Apparently I don't think differently than most everyone else. That and Sarah here stole my other idea. I'm gonna call him out for it. Oh yeah, no, the new Thrawn books, the old Thrawn books are great. Um, the new ones are really good too. is um, bring that green up to a brighter green. But I don't want to kill the highlights that I'm going to do on his chest piece. 
with a wash, so it's not a big deal that we missed it. Just try not to let too much wash pull up on the green. These new um, sprue models do, they just feel brittle. Am I the only one that feels that way if you've handled them at all? I mean, I know they're going to be more brittle than the old style because they're a different plastic, but they feel super brittle. Um, I had it talked about actually doing that saber spin, um, and rather than paper, um, I would have used um, like clear, almost overhead projector paper, and colored it to the color of the sabers. free to use that idea if that's what you want to do with the spinning sabers it would be a like a semi pliable plastic somebody did that um, I saw it in the, the Legion Facebook chat or Facebook group not chat I want to say it was LJ Pena that I saw do it with the saber in his foot. Again, you gotta be pretty selective with your washes here. You don't wanna get into that white too much. Sorry, I keep migrating off stream. as I work. It's just washing though, it's not anything super difficult to do. Kneecap. All right, we're gonna let him sit and dry for a minute. Uh, Benjamin, this. 
pack is not for public release. We got this early at Gen Con. So, stood in line at Gen Con, well, I didn't have to stand in line per se um, for playing in the Legion tournament at Gen Con, I was guaranteed one, but I did stand in line to get a second one for my son and I, and one for a customer. who has taken very good care of my paint studio over the time he's a... I can count on him to have me paint at least two of everything Imperial that comes out, so... I felt like I at least had to try to get him, uh, get him one of these. Alright. So, soft tone. Soon, I think they come out in September. I think. I want to test something real quick. Yeah, I think that'll work. We're going to test this color on his back plate, because if it messes it up, nobody will see it. Yep, it's a little too brown, so. We're going to thin it just a little bit. About 50-50 water to wash. And let's test that now. That's better. All right. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so here it goes on the head. with the wash applied. We'll start washing some of our white plates on the arm. Nope, we're not going to do too much of that just yet. We're going to wait for our black wash to completely dry because what tends to happen is, I know I'm painting off stream, I did that on purpose, um, is if you try to wash one area too soon, it'll pull, pull some of that wash out onto it. So we can start putting our third coat of red on though, onto our cloak underside. And that should be the last one that we need. It's looking pretty good under here. This will be the last coat. Alright, so I'm going to grab my fine brush. We're going to go into some of this Necromancer cloak that's thinned. And we'll do some line touch-ups along the edge of the clip where I overshot because I was being messy.
doing the red. Um, don't be afraid to overshoot a little bit. Um, Benjamin, to answer your question, um, the Phase 1 clones are just going to be mostly white, because that's what they were canon-wise. And then Phase 2, we're going to look into other things. My personal armies are very canon, so the reason for that is so that I can show that I can paint the canon, or box art, you could say, is what the painter world term is, is box art. Um, but I have a customer that I have a <laughs> have an idea, he's got some, he's going to have me do some of the specific legions, probably definitely 501st. do some more touching up of this collar piece in here. And then once that dries, we'll go in and touch up our necromancer cloak around the outside. Here's the cloak so far. We'll let it dry. And then we'll give it its wash. We can probably start washing the back side of it here though. And just a touch of water so it flows starting to dry in the pot, or in the well. Cool. You'll have to post a picture to my Facebook page when you finish that up. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see you guys' paint jobs that you're working on. Clones are my next streaming army, so... Probably will be streaming clones tomorrow. Just looking at a few things. We will see. My intent is to stream tomorrow. taken wash off of some areas that got a little too heavy and applying some to some areas that I think could use a little bit more. Great, I look forward to it, Benjamin. 
I'm still baffled that six of you are still here in my stream watching me. I love it. I'm so happy that we're getting to spend this time together. Alright. We're gonna go into this some of this green. We're gonna mix some of this together to make a little bit lighter green for the chest area glow. see that in there. Try to get it in focus. Nope. Probably not. You'll see it in the pictures, I promise. Set on these large plates, we're gonna just use it to color the paint to the color we want it, and then brush it off. So that's the other effect that wash has is to darken your colors just a touch. See you, Benjamin. Thanks for sticking around for a little bit. Don't forget to show me those clones once they're done. wash. So that's fine. You're not really going to see it with how much we thinned it down. Not with that black wash already being on there. Um, I don't know. September-ish is last I heard. I need it to come out because I need one more box. Slash, I need more stuff so I can actually use this army. And I know there's plenty of you out there waiting to get your first stuff. So, realistically, there's not a whole lot I can do with this army. I didn't get anything except a couple, two cores. One for me, one for my son. And one for, well, three cores, one for a customer, but for my personal stuff, two cores. One for me, one for my son. All right. 
we are all washed up here. Let's try to get them in focus. Darken just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And we'll go back and we'll um, highlight it up some in a, once it dries. What I'm doing here is I'm running my brush across that scapula to take some of the extra semi-dried wash off. Alright, so while we're waiting for that, double check on our cloak and see how things are drying up there. Once it's dried enough, you can't really do a whole lot to it, so don't touch it. But what we can do is get the underside. What I'm going to do is I have a red wash. And I'm going to take just a touch or two of that, a dot, and I'm going to mix in like two to one um, dark tone to a red wash. And just a touch of water to make it flow a little better. Thank you. Maybe 50-50 black to red. Yep. That's the color. 50-50 black and red. some areas where it's going to be darker. that are pooling already, so I want to make sure that doesn't pool. I'll let that sit. Alright, so while we're waiting on that, we're going to start working on some of our highlights on the face. So, we're going to go... Here's where we're starting. Let's see if I can get them in stream. Here's where we're starting. Take some thin down brain matter beige, real thin, so that you can hide your brush strokes with it. Always pull your highlights up to the highest level that you want them. Alright, make sure you get under his eye. Really exaggerate that highlight, push that contrast up. So around his orbital socket. up, flood the area with some water, and 
pull it out with the dry brush. Like I got some white into his actual eye socket. So, easy fix. And I went a little too far with my white in the other one. But again, easy fix. There we go. of these. When I'm highlighting, I tend to talk less because I'm concentrating. All right, we're gonna second coat the top of his head. Yeah, I've found push the highlights just a touch further than you think you need to. I need to stop using this copy brush and go to my good brush. afraid to push them just a little bit further than you think you would normally. Miniatures don't take light the same as real life. They do generally, but you really need to make sure that you're accenting some of that light and helping it. sometimes isn't going to help you. So. Make sure you're picking out those areas. Alright. I went and inject at my eye again over here. I'm going to touch it up and then leave it alone. Put it back, then we'll paint it again once it dries and then we'll leave it alone. So I do need to go back and put my little scrape marks in on his face. So thin down Necromancer cloak, super thin. Since I painted over them. size socket over here. And bless America. I 
think I got it that time. Ta-da. All right, so what I'm gonna actually do is I am gonna pull down some of my pure matte white. And we're gonna do some very select highlighting with it. Don't go overboard with this. It can get overpowered real quick. if you overpower it. So. I would do like the outside of the eye socket here. Very select areas. Um, don't glue your fingers together. <laughs> um, I, the droid army is, oh my lord. I have a whole video on it, um, my real name. If you go in my playlist, there's a video on me assembling the droid army. They're just not super friendly to put together. Alright, I think we'll call this done. see how we're doing here. See if I can pull off just some of this wash that's pulling up down here without making a mess. Some of it needs a little bit deeper wash, so to really bring out some of the characteristic in it. I should have just went for a straight black wash. So that's what I'm doing. start working on some highlights on this guy. So we're going to start on our white. We need brain matter beige. all that color that we've put in. So thinned brain matter beige. And push your highlights up towards the areas of highest highlight.
Think of where your light's gonna hit. And you, if you're working with the cloak also, you have to keep in mind where your cloak is. That's why it helps to kind of pre-assemble them a little bit. Just put the cloak on so that you have a picture in your mind. Something I did before of where that cloak's going to be so that you can leave a little bit more shadow there. So like for example, I know the very corner of this pauldron is going to be covered by cloaks, so I'm not going to take as much of that shadow away. on areas where light would hit differently and don't be afraid to push them pretty far especially when working with these white colors you really have to create some differentials for the light Just highlighting, highlighting, highlighting. There's lots of little ridges and edges for you to highlight on this guy. You can do as much or as little as you want. really up to you how much highlighting you do. You could have just washed them and called it a day if you wanted. He looked good washed. But taking this extra 20 to 30 minutes of work is really going to put yours on a different level than everybody else's. streaming format for tutorial videos because you guys get to see exactly what I do with the mistakes I make how I fix the mistakes I make because I promise that I'm not the first person to make those mistakes and I won't be the only one and so you get to see what I do to correct them and it helps remove that magic as I call it finish the owl effect. I'm sure other people call it that too, where you see they say, oh, paint this white, and then boom, you're done. And they cut to like a finished miniature that you're like, now I know you did other stuff. Some of these areas of highest highlights might take two highlights, that's okay. We'll 
finish this guy up tonight. Especially since his base is already done, since I did it when I did the droids. Since I was working on them already. some extreme highlights. So like knuckles. Make sure you thin your white just a little bit. Otherwise you'll get nasty brush strokes. you're pushing that white up to the areas of highest highlight. use matte white for much, but extreme highlights is one of them. Again, keep in mind uh, keep in mind where the light's going to hit. You don't want to end up highlighting something extreme highlight and then later it's like, oh, well, the light's not going to hit that area. like down here on this leg. We're not going to do any because his cloak's going to be flowing over it. We might get a couple of little pick points out here on the knee. But nothing super fancy. However, this knee's moving a little bit further forward, so we'll have a little bit more. strokes here. All right. Last question. No, it's just for looks. Um, he does have a blaster card that you can get and use in game, so that's an option. But this game, unlike other unnamed systems, is not what you see is what you get. What I'm doing is applying a sepia wash to, or the soft tone wash here, to the color. Um, it's not what you see is what you get, it is what looks cool to you. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this saber green, we're going to mix in just a little bit of our brain matter beige, make a lighter color, and we're going to, first thing is cover the red that I somehow got on the tip of the Saber. I'm not sure how that happened. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. So, we'll come back to that thought. We're going to go with the blue one first. <laughs> Slide it up as if it were a lightsaber cord. A little bit more brain matter beige.
I just do this to a couple sides to give it a little bit of color difference. It doesn't have to be a whole lot to get the effect. And we'll do the same thing up here with this green. Make some little streakies in there. And uh, Jedi, ask as many questions as you want. That's what I'm here for, is to answer questions. Alright, cool trick time. We're going to come across here and do some very light OSL over on this gun. And this hand. So the way I'm doing that is just taking some green. Can't see it on there, you'll see it in the pictures, I promise. And a little bit around the hand, not a whole lot. Lightsaber light falls off pretty quick, so be real careful with it. We just want enough to let people say, oh look, there's something cool there. So I'm using some very thin paint to do this. Very thin. like wash consistency, if not a little bit, th just a touch thicker. You don't have to do this on yours if you don't want. I I'm doing just a little bit of mine, I'm not taking it too far. as far as I want to go with it. It's very subtle. It'll show up in pictures, but it's not going to show up on this camera. I don't think. And those little white highlights help pick it out just a little bit. take some of this necromancer cloak and we're going to get some of our highlights back. Thin it down a lot. Again, highlights is where you want to try to lose your brush strokes. So push up to some of those areas of highest highlight. as much or as little highlighting as you want on the cloak. Your wash should have done some for you. And really pick out some of the ridges. Make sure you're working with thin paint. You'll know it's thin enough when you can barely see the lines of when you apply it, it kind of feathers out just a touch for the highlights. And 
this step, you can do as much or as little as you want on this step. I'm going to do quite a bit. Just highlighting. But don't lose all your pretty blacks in there that you've added with your wash. One thing I do like to do is I like to highlight with blues instead of whites when it comes to black. It just makes it look different. So I'm going to take a little bit of this um, windshield blue and mix it in with my gray. Well, my Necromancer cloak. And just get one shade lighter with it. And really focus on some of the higher highlight areas. If you're going to pick an area to highlight, highlight closer to the face more. Because what it does is it helps draw somebody's eyes up there. And it t draws them away from the body, which you may have decided to spend a little bit less time on if you want. So, like I said, if you have to pick an area to highlight and spend more time on highlighting, the face area. So this cloak around the face is going to be your focus speed painting trick that I've learned over the years. Alright, we're going to go with just one touch lighter for some extreme highlights up here on the top. So underneath is going to be a different beast. We'll do a few select highlights, but it's really a cloth cloak, so it doesn't get a whole lot. So that's a little too pink for what I want. So I'm just going to dot some highlights onto some of these quilt areas. Again, you don't have to do this. You can do as much or as little as you want as far as this highlighting goes. But I'm keeping in mind where I think light's going to hit. I'm only doing this the areas that I'm certain light's going to hit. trying to focus on the upturned corners of them. I 
How's it going, Ethan? some finishing touches on a Grievous. Really focusing on the area. It's not going to be too obscured by body and stuff. So. You could dry brush this if you wanted, but you're going to get a little bit dustier effect than just doing the dot game that I'm playing right now. i got to give my hand a break. Uh, the cape is the last thing that I'm finishing up. So... I'll show you where I'm at here, Ethan. Let me set this cape down real quick. Here's my face. Let's see if I can get it into focus here. There's the face. Here's my body. This is going to be tougher to get into focus because my camera's being a pain. So there's the body, and then I'm finishing up the cloak. decided I do like that pink color a little bit. So we're going to use that as my highlight for a lot of it. Because it dries darker than it looks. on the quilt parts that are going to be actually seen and that need highlights. This is probably going to be the most tedious part that you do. Again, only focus on the ones that you know they're going to see. We'll finish this Grievous in about three hours total. Not three hours from now, three hours total.
Um, I've done the droids also. I didn't stream the droids. Mostly because I did an assembly video on them. Um, and then I just painted them. And didn't even kind of realize that I was painting them. If that makes sense. Like, I just mindlessly went into painting them after assembling and priming. Um, and then I realized that I probably can't do a video on droids as much as I want to because I use my airbrush for 90% of them and I can't, I don't have an effective setup for filming my airbrushing yet. So. So what I'm doing is stopping every now and again to hold it up and see if there's anywhere I've missed that the light's hitting. Give me a few, and I'll show you what one of my droids looks like again. I showed him earlier in the stream. Alright. I know there's a stick in the way. Sometimes it doesn't like to work. Anyways, we'll go into our brain matter beige. We're going to highlight this collar real quick. Lastly, I don't see this bit on the reference photo I'm using, but there's like a little class pair where we're just going to paint it gunmetal. It may or may not be canon, but it's going to be gunmetal on ours. Alright. Moment of truth. some of the highlights on his arms and legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this pure necromancer cloak. We will mix in just a touch of that blue again, that blue mix, and we'll do some light highlight picking out. Not a, not a whole lot. I promised I'd show you a couple of my droids. I went for a Geonosis theme. For some reason my camera doesn't like to do close-ups. But if you look at the thumbnail on my YouTube video, or go on my YouTube page, or on my Facebook page, you'll be able to see them a little bit better. Again, do as much or as little of this as you want. Just keep in mind that some of it's going to be covered by his cloak if you're doing the cloak effect. I 
Come see them. Yeah, check out my channel. Check out um, my Facebook. But there's an assembly guide for the droids. It's just me assembling them and griping about how much paint I get on my fingers. Um, but it does kind of give some tips on here's what I found works for me. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more detail on this arms. Do as much of this or as little as you want. some glue on there. You can probably hear my cat in the background and I do apologize for that. Just super glued my thumb to it. So now that we've got that on there, I see some areas that need just a little OSL, just a touch. how colors run into the recesses. And then his face. Finish Grievous. I'm trying to get him in video for you. Come on, camera. Sure what's going on. Let's put a black background here. See if that helps. There we go. Maybe with my hands messing it up. I can catch him in focus for just a second. I'll take pictures, of course, and have them up on the channel here in a minute, or on the Facebook in a minute. 
last thing I need to do is remove them very carefully off this. And get him onto his base. What you see me doing is the hot glue. Sometimes makes it so that paint doesn't get to certain areas. So it's just touching that up a little bit. Ethan. I went for something a little bit unique. And I'm sure yours will look great. When you finish them up, post pictures on the Facebook page, my Facebook page. I'd love to see it. Having some minor issues getting him to stick to his base but we'll get there. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get off here, go get some pictures taken. We painted up a Grievous in three hours on the stream, three hours. If I can do it, I promise any of you can do it. Just follow the guide, and you'll do just fine. Thanks for sticking through with me. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my music here and play my outro, and then we will get off of here. So thanks for hanging around. Have a good night, everybody. Show your appreciation by hitting the like button. You can subscribe by hitting the logo in the center of their screen to see all the new stuff as it comes out. Find me on social media at xxnerfert or xx for Twitter. Facebook, Jagged Brush Studios. To see the next video, hit the video on the left. To see the newest upload, hit the video on the right. And I hope you enjoyed. Get out there and paint some more.